Where did pianos come from? Uh, they developed out of the harpsichord, which was the instrument of the 18th century, and the pianos were invented by the Cristovri in Italy. But in the beginning there was not so much interest in it. Um, it's more the second half of the 18th century which makes suddenly uh, the interest in pianos explode. Interestingly enough, most of the piano makers were German-speaking. So last time we talked about English pianos, but we have all these names like Schudi and Kirkman, Zumpe, Garner, Beck, Pullman. They were all Germans going to England to make their careers there. But also German makers like uh, Nanette Streicher and André Stein, her brother, and Johann Schanz and Anton Walter and Konrad Graf went from Germany to Vienna to begin their careers there. And uh, Sebastian Erhard, uh, Erhard in German, and uh, Ignaz Pleyel, and Henri Pape, they came from Germany to Paris to make their careers there. So it's, they're all uh, German-speaking people uh, that became the famous piano makers. And later in the 1850s, for instance, uh, Mr. Steinweg and his sons went to America and became Steinway. London, Paris and Vienna were the uh, uh, centers of piano building in the beginning. And, um, the Viennese pianos are very specific with an own taste and an own style and everything. Uh, Johann Andreas Stein in Augsburg is supposed to have invented this specific type of action and he became very famous. He's also mentioned in several letters from Mozart to his father saying that Stein's piano, that was in 1777 that he was there, that Mo uh, Stein's pianos are the best he ever came across. Here is such a very early Viennese type of piano. It has five octaves, it still looks like a harpsichord, and this is the type of piano that Mozart knew all of his life. He never had more than five octaves. And interestingly enough, you can see this one has black uh, natural keys and white sharps. It's, it's reversed, which also comes from the harpsichord. And it's quite usual in the early period of the Viennese German type of pianos. Now this piano, must have been in Gera in Germany for a very long time. Because when we, at your restoration, took the soundboard out, it was full of mice nests underneath. And it were all scraps of paper from uh, Gera papers and uh, brochures of a beekeeper. Well, these mice don't do that in a very short time, so it must have been in Gera for a very long time. Now there was a builder in Gera, Friedrich, a very famous uh, family of builders, and they made pianos, but there's no uh, comparison, so we can't say it was done by, it was built by Friedrich, Friedrich. That's, that's unfortunately not possible. But this is a Walter type of piano, very much the model, everything is like Anton Walter, the famous maker. As you can see, this piano doesn't have a name on it, but that's not unusual at all. Mozart's own piano that he bought in 1782, which is nowadays in his birth house in, in Salzburg, doesn't have a name on it either. But it's made by Anton Walter. This is very interesting because it's such a simple piece of furniture. It's solid, solid oak. So it must have been made for a musician because musicians and rich people bought the instruments and rich people took very elaborate, beautifully veneered instruments. But this one is very simple and very plain, so it's a kind of a miracle that it still exists. Why wasn't it thrown away in 1840 or in 1860 or something? Now Mozart only had five octaves during his lifetime. Beethoven in his youth also had five octaves. You must imagine that the first two piano concertos he wrote never go out of these five octaves. And three and four, he used five and a half octaves. You will see this type later. But the piano grew very quickly because the taste changed so much, also in music. 
And of course you can't play Chopin or, or Brahms or even late Beethoven on this type of piano. So that's the reason that it's, why would people not still play on this in 1850 or something? Why wasn't it thrown away? A very specific thing of these early Viennese type pianos is that they don't have pedals. But you can raise the dampers, for instance, like the right pedal of a modern piano, but it has knee levers instead of uh, pedals. So underneath the keyboard is a knee lever. If I push this, the dampers come up. So this is normal. And this piano has a moderator. That's something what almost every Viennese piano has up till 1840. And a moderator is a stripe of cloth which goes in between the hammers and the strings to soften the sound. This one has a hand stop for it. It's almost like what you saw in, in harpsichords. So if I pull this forward, the moderator comes in between. I'll first show you the normal sound. So normal sound without a moderator. Now with the moderator. It's much softer. It's a wonderful sound. Everybody always loves it. So it's a bit strange that it disappeared after 1840 because it's, it's such a magnificent effect in pianos. There were two slightly different uh, directions in the Viennese action. It's the Stein school, which comes from Jan Andreas Stein, and which was followed up by his son and daughter Andreas Stein and Nanette, who married Andreas Streicher. Nanette Streicher became very famous later, which is a very delicate uh, system. I'll try to explain the difference. And there was the school of Anton Walter, and this, that's what you see here. It's, a more, it's less refined, a bit more robust. Now, what is very typical for the Viennese piano, it's the action. No other piano builds in France or in English make this type of action. The actions are very, very delicate to play. In rest position, the hammer is very close to the string. And you can see how small the hammer is. It's, it's covered with leather. But the key depth is very, very shallow. So each hammer hinges in a little fork, which is attached to the key. That means you really move the hammer with your finger. Really, you have the hammer in your finger. Which is, which is extremely delicate and direct and, and responsive and explosive. You can do everything with it. Here you see a back check rail. That's something the Anton Walter pianos had, but the Stein Streicher types don't have that. And it means the hammer is being checked, catched on the, on the way back. If you don't have that, like Stein and Streicher, the hammer tends to bounce again to the string if you play loud. There were differences also between the, the the different types in, in Vienna, in how heavy they played. There's an interesting thing in a letter that Haydn wrote to, his, to a pupil, and he says, don't buy an Anton Walter piano, buy a Schanz piano. The Anton Walters are much, heavy, much too heavy to play. About the soundboards, in the early period, they were very, very, very thin. You have an example of it, and, um, which makes it very light in weight, and that makes it very responsive. So the tone is not very long because it's so light, but it's very explosive and it really works fantastically for the very articulated music that Haydn and Mozart wrote. Now here's a piece of scrap wood a bit later. This might be 1880 or something. You can see the enormous difference in thickness. 
and this is of course much heavier and that's a part of the development of the piano that the soundboard gets heavier and heavier and heavier. So this type was exactly the type that Mozart knew in his life and he had one of these. Um, Rico will play a sonata by Mozart now. The next stage of the development of the Viennese piano is not so different. He is a Michel Rosenberger piano. It's built around 1800 and the concept is exactly the same as from this one. Also the type of action, the type of damping, everything is almost the same. But it has five and a half octaves instead of five. And it, has, it still doesn't have pedals, it has knee levers, one for raising the dampers and the other one is for um, operating the moderator. It has a thicker soundboard a little bit and a bit more tension on the strings and you, since you can operate this uh, moderator with a knee lever you can do it while you're playing. That's a bit of a difference but for the rest it's almost the same. And very interesting, when Beethoven wrote his third and fourth piano concerto this was the piano in Vienna. There was nothing else. So there were not pianos with more keys or everything. This was it and Beethoven was Beethoven so he used all the notes of the piano he had available.
The next episode will be about uh, another Viennese piano, it's 1810, Matthias Müller in Vienna, uh, a wonderful piano. Six octaves that had Beethoven used six octaves in his fifth piano concerto. That's for next time.